Hello, I'm Greg Robinson, Chief Curator of Bainbridge Island Museum of Art. And I'm Amy Sawyer, Associate Curator at Bainbridge Island Museum of Art. We want to welcome you to Molly Vaughn's Project 42 exhibition here at BEMA. I first met Molly Vaughn while serving on the Betty Bowen Award Committee at Seattle Art Museum. In 2017, she was awarded the top prize, and then Sam curated an exhibition for her in 2018, and we had the chance to attend that, to see her work installed, and also to experience some of the interactive activations programming. We are honored to host this beautiful and complicated exhibition memorializing the lives of trans women and gender non-conforming persons who've been murdered. We started working with Molly Vaughn on the idea of exhibiting her work here at BEMA in 2018 and asked her at what point would she like to exhibit here. She proposed the midpoint of Project 42, which would be 21 installations. Project 42 reflects BEMA's commitment to give artists a platform to connect individuals to complex or challenging issues. Working with Molly Vaughn was an honor and a journey to successfully connect her vision and process to the installation. Each element is intentional. It's not just to engage visitors, but allow them to have an immersive experience. Originally, I was born in London, England, and we moved to America in 1985. I was very fortunate to come from a very art-centric family. My parents were extremely supportive of my art and my exploration of art as a vocalization of my life. I was lucky enough to go to the School of Visual Arts in Savannah, which was a satellite of the School of Visual Arts in New York. And then unfortunately, my school in Savannah closed. And so the last year that I was at school, and I had this tremendous sort of juxtaposition of this rigid atelier style education at this very small institute in Savannah, and then suddenly found myself in this extremely contemporary postmodern school in New York City for a year. And that really influenced how I started to see my work and starting to see my art. When I went for my MFA at the University of South Florida in Tampa, I worked as a production assistant at Graphic Studio, which is a world-renowned printmaking and sculpture atelier. And there I saw artists who would come to the studio primarily to explore printmaking and project making outside of their scope of expertise. One of the things that working at Graphic Studio really did for me was opened my eyes to the idea of research and exploring materials outside of your own personal practice as a way to find new forms of vocabulary and exploration of ideas and concepts. When I was exploring my graduate work in photolithography, I produced a, a body of work that really dealt with a personal narrative that used personal symbols to discuss my transness. And from that body of work, I produced these sort of like narrative prints. After my graduate studies, I started making drawings about my hair and how my hair was acting as a vehicle for exploration of my gender identity. The beginning of the project was really centered in research that I was doing, investigating violence against the trans community. I had this feeling that one of the biggest challenges that my community was facing was really finding methods to reach individuals who were already allies, but who weren't ready to focus on the complications that surrounded the trans community in terms of the layers of intersectional oppression. As a white trans woman, I wanted to use my identity as a way to connect with and speak to others who were already allied with the community, but may not have been fully aware of the impacts that intersectional oppression was having. 
The number 42 signifies the average life expectancy of a trans or gender non-conforming or non-binary person in America. Even though we've made headway since averaging together all this different research that I was reading, our life expectancy is still lower than that of our cisgender counterparts. The way that I came into the production of the garments was from a printmaking space. I knew that we were already making inkjet printed fabrics that could be extremely complicated in terms of their printed layers. And I had a great interest in that. When I proposed Project 42, it was funded initially by a grant from the Art Matters Foundation. And what I proposed was a series of paintings. The paintings would be created around a Google Earth screenshot of a murder location of a trans woman in America. And I actually completed a painting or two based on my proposed concept, and they were too static. And I wanted to find a different way to, to activate this conversation and discussion. The backdrops are in conversation with the garments. Much of our world exists around a binary relationship, whether that be male or female or rich or poor. In the trans world, there's a, a binary relationship that kind of exists between passing and, and not passing. And when you're passing, your level of safety and anonymity is protected as a trans person. And not everybody's goal is to pass, but certainly a lot of the violence that occurs happens because uh, perhaps somebody is passing and they are clocked, which means like identified as being trans. And that suddenly places them at high risk. So the backdrops indicate this relationship between binary, you know, passing, not passing, um, safety versus violence, anonymity versus being clocked. And though they're the same exact pattern, the difference in sizes shows that they are separate. And once that garment is identified as being different from the backdrop, it can never be reabsorbed. The garment and the backdrop are the small distance of eight inches, and that is the small space in which violence can occur and someone's life may be taken. Each time I make a garment, a flag is created, and the flags that we make now are the size of a memorial flag. When you really look at the idea of a flag, and you look at the flags that we create, the question that I hope arises is, why does this person deserve a flag? Like, what about them makes them special? And that's just the very essence of the idea. They are special. They do deserve to be honored just as much as anybody else. The flags come out of that idea and hope of honoring these individuals. The work that is on loan in the exhibition from the Henry Art Gallery is the memorial garment for Brandy Martell. This was an earlier work for the project. It was the first work that I completed for the project in Washington State. And the Henry was so supportive of the work right from the start. They helped me to find a collaborator who performed in the garment at the museum. And together we kind of came up with this action that was very symbolic and personal. The piece was danced in, a drawing was made by the collaborator's feet. And at the end of the collaborator's action, I actually cut the garment off of the dancer. And then I remained in the space and stitched the garment back together using surgeon's stitches, which left a very visible scar which spoke about the situations that arise when a community experiences violence, how even though it might be seemingly put back together, that there remains a scar and an artifact of that violence. The collaborations are, to me, as important, perhaps even a little bit more important than anything else we do. 
You know, the idea behind Project 42 really revolves around the relationship between art and activism. The collaborators are often volunteers who willingly create a way to share their body via a memorial action that they design. That's a very deep commitment to a stranger. And what our collaborators are asked to do actually begins when they are only provided the name and location of the individual that they're going to memorialize. And so they actually have to do all the research by themselves. They have to go and find out about this person all by themselves. And by doing that, it takes them from the place of being an ally and helps them to become someone who is an accomplice in this activism. Their activation is their personal way to return the humanity to one of these individuals whose humanity was stolen from them. The work that we created for Lorena is monumental. The way that these garments happen is I have a list of names and I have a collage of photographs and I've been looking at these names and these photographs since 2012. And these are the 42 people that Project 42 is memorializing. And what I do is I focus on the names because I know the faces so well. And I wait for someone to step forward and ask to be next. And I had already chosen who the individuals were that I wanted to memorialize when I had my exhibition at Seattle Art Museum. But one of the things that occurred was when I walked into the space that I would be exhibiting in, I saw an opportunity to use the space to its full effectiveness as a way to pull people in and have this conversation around this extremely important issue of the violence against trans women. Lorena, like more than 90% of trans women murdered every year, was a person of color. She was extremely well known in the New York City bowl scene, which is the, the scene in which the community comes together to vogue and to dance and to celebrate and very much exist as a community. And so I knew that her piece should be big and that it should be theatrical. And I knew that it needed to be a piece that made a huge statement because she just made such a huge statement when she was dancing and performing. And so I wanted to, to give her a really large, impactful work. The memorial garment that we created for Letitia King really speaks to her personal narrative. Letitia was 15 when she was murdered at school by a 14-year-old boy. And it's not really possible to know exactly where Letitia's identity may have pushed towards. We generally think of her as a young trans or gender non-conforming individual. The garment was created for the collaborator, as all of our garments are. We create the garments based on the needs of the collaborator and how they want to honor the individual for whom they are creating the activation. This collaborator was a mother, and so she felt it was really important that she be the one to honor and activate Letitia's garment. The way that the garment came together reminded me so much of a pair of pajamas. And for me, that really linked the idea of this garment to youth, particularly because of Letitia's age. For the exhibition at BIMA, I wanted to display the garment on a white Formica shelf or within a white Formica cubby. To me, those materials really spoke about the type of ready-made furniture and shelving that you often find in the room of children. The trans community, particularly trans people of color, have long been underrepresented in the spaces and on the walls of art institutions. 
for an institution to step forward and to recognize the importance of work that examines and elevates trans artists and trans issues means that there has been a shift in the ways through which contemporary society is exposed to the trans community and trans issues. The institution has always been a place in which validation occurs. It has always served as a place where the other has the opportunity to connect and change minds and hopefully to move them out of a place of marginalization and into a place of equity and equality. I have always seen the idea that all 42 garments would be very similar because I really want the impact of the number 42 to be a primary focus of the exhibition of these works. The one thing I do know is that when the 42 works are complete, that the project will no longer continue in its current manner. The idea of the Guardians first came to me when I was working on my TEDx talk. And once the individual who we were to memorialize stepped forward, I knew that I wanted to make sure that there was a sense of safety for the spirit of the individual if they attended. I came up with the idea of the guardians as presences on stage to accompany the collaborator during the performance to protect the spirit not only of Tyra Trent, who we memorialized, but of all the trans individuals whose names were spoken and whose spirits were represented. The guardian headdresses were each created by the guardians themselves, and they had an extremely personal symbolic meaning behind each piece. The necklaces that we created for the procession were created by me. I made them in collaboration with Hanako O'Leary, who is a brilliant artist each necklace that I created, I created for the individuals who I knew would be walking as guardians during the opening procession. So they are infused with energy and symbols that, to me, represent each individual. The guardians remain in the exhibition as presences of protection, guidance, and a further honoring of all the trans individuals who have lost their lives to violence. Thank you for joining us on this beautiful and complicated journey. Bima really hopes that this exhibition will be picked up by larger art museums around the country We've been very honored to be a platform at the midpoint of 21 installations and would really like to see the artist able to achieve her vision of 42.